Hey Sam, how are you? Hey, Jonathan, how are you? Uh. I'm well, I'm well. I'm excited about today's, uh, our first official uh, uh, live stream, weekly live stream. So I'm excited about sharing today. Let's see who is this. Phoebe Junior Mike. Uh, how are you doing, Mr. B? All right, Mr. B. All right, so everybody, come on in, come on in, come on in, take a seat. And um, uh, let me know where you're from, where you're getting on from. Um, how long you've been playing the piano? Share a little bit about yourself. Um, as we wait for everybody to kind of get on, and we'll get started with this live stream, um, with the content very soon. I have a uh, quite a bit to share. Um, can everyone hear the piano well? Let's do a quick tech check. Can everyone hear the piano well? the mini keys is not showing up all right let's fix that give me one moment let's fix that Let's just turn up a little bit. All right, let's see if I can turn it up for you. How is that? All right. Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, all right, I'm trying to figure out why you aren't seeing my MIDI come through, and I'm going to figure it out. Yeah, I see you, um, and it might be that I just... I didn't connect it, and there it is. I didn't connect it. All right, so um, you all hang tight <laughs> and give me a moment to connect this. Um, let's see. And just let me switch the screen over a little bit. Actually, let me switch it here.
Aha, there we go. All right, everybody, thank you so much for your patience. I'm back. I'm so sorry about that. Um, uh, I literally forgot to reconnect. I uh, had to go play and forgot to connect the MIDI back. Um, and isn't that the way to start off my first live stream um, with this new kind of weekly live stream format? I know we live streamed last week, but that was kind of a test run. And so um, thank you all for sticking with me. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so let's see, let's just kind of get to, uh, so we see, we have, uh, Nicholas, hi Nicholas, Dante from Charlotte, wow, uh, Masango from South Africa, uh, wow, Mario, how you doing Mario, let me borrow your skills for Sunday, uh, <laughs> uh, you didn't want mine, um, so, uh, listen, I am really excited about today. And this is kind of going to be our new weekly format where I um, have just come up with some ideas I want to share with you. So like a mini lesson, maybe a large lesson, because um, oftentimes once I get started, I, I really can't stop. I don't like to stop and I don't have a hard stop time uh, um, today. So uh, we'll see what happens. Daniel says hello from Brazil. Hello, Daniel. Um, and so what I want to do. Um, Silk from Roxboro, Roxboro, wh wh where is that in the world? Roxboro, Roxboro. All right. And so what I want to do is I want to share just a couple quick announcements and then I want to jump right into the lesson and then start taking your questions and, and, and you can ask me questions this entire time. Uh, so let's get started. Um, the first thing I want to say, uh, again, is thank you all for joining me. Um, now, I'm not sure, some of you all know, but uh, for those that don't know, we are launching the fourth semester of our online school um, called The Bridge. It's an online school, and there are several people here actually in the chat who have actually taken courses with us. Um, let's see, Samuel's in here, and he's taking the uh, several courses with us. Um, we literally have students literally from around the world that take with us. And so we are starting up in actually a little over two weeks. And so I wanted to share um, kind of a little bit about the course offerings we have this semester. Um, so the fall semester starts October 1st. It's 12 weeks. And so it's one class per week and then one chat session per week, which is like a live stream. So you can come in and ask questions. And most of the time, it's no more than two people at a time. And so you and I'm, I'm there for an extended period of time to answer questions. There are tons of resources for each class, tutorials, recordings, MIDI files, just kind of a lot of stuff. And the cool thing is you have access to all these resources for life, um, unlike a lot of other online schools where once the course is over, you lose access. Um, but for ours, you have access for life. Um, now, um, some of our course offerings, we, we're doing a Gospel Foundations course. So if you're a gospel musician looking to improve your skills, this is the course for you. We cover all things gospel music, um, from gospel foundation, uh, foundational theory, passing chords, talk music, uh, just shop music, kind of the whole gamut. We have another course um, uh, that's called Chords Galore, and we examine multiple voicing systems. And so if you're looking to grow your chord vocabulary, if you're kind of stuck, this is the class for you. Um, we have also have another class called Chordal Moves and Progressions. This class, we examine chordal moves from the very tame plagal cadences and 2-5-1 chord progressions, and we just go, um, like we start there, and we move to just some um, just unreal progressions. It's, it's a phenomenal class. Um, we even have the improvisation class. So if you're interested in the jazz uh, world and you want to learn how to improvise, or even if you're in the gospel world and you want to learn how to improvise, uh, uh, this would be the class for you. We cover uh, quite a bit of things improvisation-wise. And then we actually are launching a new course this semester um, that we're called, a s called the Songwriters Course. Um, so if you're interested in writing um, um, songs, um, I have a teacher. She's actually from Brazil, uh, Daniel. Uh, she's a phenomenal uh, songwriter. Her name is Michelle Alonzo, 
and she will be teaching that course um, for us. And so I'm, um, I'm excited to share more. Um, I'm excited to share more about that with you all. Um, but all you have to do to access this, these courses, go on our website, just skillmusician.com, go right on the front page, and um, go to courses, and you'll see the courses right there. So it's pretty easy to get to. All right. So let's close that down. And all right. So I see someone said something. Uh, Dante says, can you explain piano modes and how to apply it to playing? Um, Dante, we actually, um, in my quarter moves and progressions class, we go through quite a bit explaining piano modes um, and how to apply it to playing. This is one of our big, big lessons. Um, uh, and it, it really transforms. It, it opens the world up to you. Um, uh, just it's it's phenomenal stuff so I really encourage you uh, uh, Dante to definitely check out the quarter moves and progressions class that's the class you, you want to check out um, to really dig really really deep um, into the modes and what they mean how to apply them um, there there are uh, seven church modes um, let's see Ionian Dorian Phrygian Lydian Mixolydian Aeolian and Locrian um, and those different um uh, yeah, yeah, Sam, the quarter moves and progressions class is the same, um, ac but it's, it's going to be um, expanded, so we're doing actually more since we have 12 weeks. Um, but yeah, it's, it's that course. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, Daniel, do you have some content about fingering? I do. I have a really, really cool video we put, we put together um, where we... Uh, where um i go i go through fingering examples and really challenge you on how how to uh uh properly finger so let me see let me give this link um so daniel there's a link to the video uh so definitely check that one out okay so let's get started today's les uh, lesson is going to be about inner uh, voice movements uh, so the inner voice movements. So a lot of times you'll hear guys play and they're doing a lot of movements. Just little movements inside. And, and you're like, what is, what, I what is that? What, what are all those extra notes that you're adding? I remember I was trying to figure it out myself and I was saying, man, I know you're doing two chords but it sounds like 10. Um, so what is it that you're doing to make it sound like that? Um, and so uh, I wanna share um, uh, uh, just kind of the secrets behind that and we'll see how far I get. Um, so let's get started. So there are two ways to think about inner voice movement. At least I like to think about inner voice movement in two distinctly different ways. Okay. The first way is as I play a chord and I have some tension that needs to be resolved. So that's the first way. Uh, and we're going to really spend some time there looking at that. You know, you've hear, heard stuff like just simply. And so th this, this idea is, is kind of suspense and then resolution. Some tension that gets resolved. So that's the first way. And then the second way is you, we actually land a chord and then we start moving in preparation for the next chord. So something like, uh, like this might do. Uh, so I say. So kind of moving after the fact to prepare us for the next chord or the target chord that we're going to. So the first thing I want to do is, is I want to go back to that first way is where we land with some tension and uh, and we resolve it. Okay. Um, so let's take a simple C major chord. 
and let's um, let's let's just examine a few different tensions that that are really simple. Uh, the first one is the most common one is the four three suspension. So this kind of idea. So, and it's called four three because if you look at it, um, if, we, if we give each note a number one two three four five, so the fourth is here and it resolves to the third. So. Okay, and the second one is this kind of uh, nine one or two to three. So this is called like a uh, the technical term for this is this a C sus two, right? And then we resolve. All right. So if I had a progression that went C F G, right? Now, um, this is perfectly fine. And in some cases, you might want to play it like that. Um, and then you might try inverting the chords. Um, but then you're looking like, what else can I do? So let's start adding these small suspensions. So so let's do it. Uh, so we have a, this C sus2. Up. Then we're going to go to the F sus2. Alright, and then G43 or sus4. Do you see that? Mm. So let me make sure the suspension is in the middle. So let's do it again. So. So instead of playing a simple, we've kind of changed now into this. And so you can really have some really, f uh, um, do some really uh, cool and fun ideas with that. All right. <laughs> All right. So that's simply, um, that's kind of a kind of a simple route to go. All right. So now uh, let's let's kind of turn up the heat just a little bit. And so what I want to do is I want to kind of give you a few options on major, minor, and dominant chord types um, that you can use to create this um, inner motion. Inner motion. All right. So, on major chords, one great option is to move from the fifth up to the sharp five and up to the six. All right, so let me kind of play that for you. So, if I'm playing a C major chord, and then, and then. All right, here's another option where we go five, sharp five, seven, six. So I play that. And I'm just, I'm doing, I'm moving in both hands. All right, do you hear that? Or just going. All right. And so let me let me just do a little more teaching on on how I actually like to play these. So the way I like to play these is I like to establish the outside voice. So whatever my outside voice is, and then I really like to move afterwards. Right? Okay. So let me just kind of let's see. Let's pick a song. Um, Let's do the, let's do a song. Let's do Amazing Grace. That's one of my favorite songs, Amazing Grace. So let's try that one. So um, 
<laughs> you hear that move? I'll do it again. So, uh, I'm not a singer. Amazing grace. Keep going. How sweet. Damn. So enough, enough for that. All right. So let's look at that again. So if you notice, I did the five sharp five six or right over over major, and I'm I'm echoing the same idea between both hands. All right. So I'm moving the fifth up to the sharp five to the six, and so anytime you have a, a major chord, you can do this particular motion and add motion to your or. Right. Uh, let's see. Over minor. Let's go to A minor. So A minor is here, and I'm going to voice it like this. All right. And so one we one move we can do on minor is go five sharp five six, same way we did in major. So kind of that kind of that James Bond type of uh, playing, right? Or let's go one seven flat seven six, right? So you hear that? Okay. All right. Now let me go to another chord type, my third chord type. Uh, and I know I'm going quickly through these, but we're going to we're going to venture back around and kind of put these all in a song and see if we can't work through these different ideas. All right. Um, let's see. Over dominant. Let's go to a G7. Now, one really, really cool, mo a common move is going from the 13th on the dominant chord. Now, like, wait, what is the 13th? Well, the 13th is the sixth, an octave up, right? So if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's just E. All right. So so a common move on dominance is if we go from the 13th, we flat it, and then resolve to the 5th. So, and you've heard that sound before. Right. Another common, or... Maybe not so common. Well, yes, another common one is the flat the nine. So if I'm in G7, the nine to the flat nine. So I have, um, um, or just do that. All right, those are two really common ones. Maybe one that's not so common is the sharp 11 to the four to the three of G7. So the sharp, sharp 11 is C sharp. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, sharp 11. Right, so, so sharp 11, four, three. So we have, okay. So let's do a sample song and see if we can't uh, apply these ideas. Um, let's see. Um, let's do I Surrender All. And so this song goes, I think I can just about pull all these ideas in there. I think this has all the chords necessary. So, so I Surrender All is a common gospel uh, hymn. Starts on the one, um, and then it goes to the five. Then the comments go to six. Then, um, uh, hello, he's Robert Charles Dior. All right. So let's see if we can't do these moves. So here's the, here it is. So right off the bat, I started with that first inner, inner motion, right? So that was, uh, uh, that's a five sharp five seven six. 
So see if I, uh, this time I'll try playing without stopping so you can kind of see it. Here's my five. I'm going to go flat five. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go, hello, Renee from Florida. I'm going to go, let's see. So I'm on the E7. So the nine is F sharp. And the E, uh, the F sharp will be flatted to F. So. And I also did the, well, let me just one voice. You see? So let's go back. Uh. 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 All right, so someone's saying there's a delay between the audio and the video. The auto comes first before the video. Um, so Julian says don't have doesn't have a delay. All right, so it might be the connection. So definitely check your connection um, to make sure you're all right. So let's start again and let's see. And I'll try to call them out again. First, I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the five sharp five six one. So because the first chord is major. So here it is. Um, I'm going to go to the G first version or G. So G2, G sus2. Um, now here I'm going to go from, from the 9 to the flat 9. So I'll wait right there. I'm going to minor and I went. Five sharp five six. So does everyone hear how I'm, I'm kind of pulling these together? Let's do it again because I want to ma make sure everyone understands what's happening. So what I'm doing is giving you a set of movements that you can do um, over major, minor, dominant chords. Yeah. So major, minor, and dom major, minor, and dominant. So I'm giving you a set of moves you can do um, right away. And so over major, we talked about moving the five sharp five to up to six so kind of inner voice movement so we're moving the inner voices right sharp five sharp five six um, e or even going to five sharp five seven six um, over minor we talked about moving up same move five sharp five six or, or starting on the tonic going tonic or one seven flat seven six okay and over dominant, we talked about going from the 13th to the flat, or sharp 5 to the 5. Um, or 9, flat 9. Okay? So let's try it again. Alright, so here we go. Here's our C, and I'm going to do the 5, sharp 5, 6 move. Um, here it is. So... G. Nothing really. Just just sus two. Now I'm gonna go to um. Now here's my E seven. My dominant chord is coming to lay to lead me to A minor. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go. That's the thirteenth sharp five five. Now oh, when I'm going to the minor chord here. I'm going to A minor. I'm gonna go five sharp five six. Okay, I'm doing a couple other ones that I'm going to explain in a second. Um, but give me a thumbs up or say you got it if that makes sense to you um, in the in the in the chat box, the live chat. So let me know that you you got it and um, uh, and I can move on to the next thing.
All right, so Julian says, uh, uh, it's really cool. I can't wait to try this out. Cool, cool, cool. Let's we'll see. The Teresa, no. There is no coincidence. There is no coincidence. It says total sense. Okay. All right, Mr. B says, awesome. All right, cool deal. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's go f further. All right. Now, right now, I'm only focused on one uh one idea so one note being moved so we started with these in a or or over um major chords uh, this kind of idea remember so, or and i'm just doubling between the two hands but it's the same note right um but we don't have to just use one note we can use two and we do this often in gospel music. And so you'll hear ideas like this. Um, so on a C major chord, just to hear stuff like this. Um, all right. Uh, or let's see. Stuff like that. Um, the classic that I talked about in another video, right? Um, but you hear these inner mo motions, like inner, inner movements, like these, where we have two voices moving at the same time. So I just want to give you uh, a few of these. Uh, maybe two. Let's see. All right. So over major chord, over C major. Um, now here's what here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna land the outside voices, so C and G in this case, and then then we're gonna do something where we're surrounding the notes. And so in my right hand, I'm gonna surround C. So I'm gonna start on B, go to D, and then land on C. So I have, all right. And in my left hand, I'm gonna start on C, and I'm gonna play. And I'm going to surround E. So I'm going to go D, F, E. So, so, so together. Now, sometimes I might not play the C down here in the bottom, or I might just go something like that. And I'm adding a little, little neighbor tone. I got that from um, Keith Jarrett. He, he's a big fan of that. Uh, so. Right? All right. That's one where we, we have this thing going on here. Um, let's do another one really quickly before I put it in a song. Um. the melody that's the mm. all right so we can do the same move even even when we have the third in the melody all right so let's just focus on that one we can get a lot of mileage out of that one move so so whenever I'm on C major So I can land the outside voices and then move these inside voices. All right. And even if, I, if my melody knows E, it's going to be a little closer. But I can still do the same thing. R, G. Now some of y'all can reach that. That's cool. You hear that? Or you can do it up here. A little close. All right, so let's go back to our song, I Surrender All. Remember, I Surrender All goes. All right, so it goes one, then five, then six. All right, 
So here it is. Here's the first one. Now right away, we can jump right into it. Let's try that again. Did you hear it? Right off, right off the bat, we did it. So... Then it goes to G. Now I could do it here, the same move. Right? Now let's look at that one. For the G, now we're going to the step. So remember, we have the seven to the nine, one, and then. But in this case, we're staying diatonic to the key. So. As I did it in C, I went to the major seventh, but here I'm going to the dominant seventh. We're staying diatonic to the key. Now, if I was in the key of G, then I would do. Right. But because I'm staying diatonic to the key of C, I would go. I'm in the key of C, so I'm gonna. Now there might be times where you want to want that sound if you're going. Um, but in this case, we're going to stay in the key. All right, so let's go back. So here it is. And here it is again. There it is. Wow. And how about here? Let's see, on a minor chord. same move so I'm on a minor so I'm going to go to the, in this case I will go to the um, yeah, I will go to the G sharp there alright alright so let's go back to the beginning again and see if we can't figure this out so here it is Sorry, let's try it again. <laughs> uh, right here. Uh. Then here. <laughs> uh. All right. Okay, let's see what some boot says. Andrew says, can you use it in the context of a song? I think I'm a little late on that one because that's what I was just doing. <laughs> Those incidental chord progressions not intended for the focus of the video are worth their own video. Yeah, John. Um, so I would definitely encourage you um, to definitely enroll in our quarter moves and progressions during our uh, chords galore class um, because I kind of, I give away all my secrets about how I how I how I built these chords, um, and we cover multiple um, uh, um, sorry I'm seeing seeing the text come in or I mean the chat come in um, so yeah I cover multiple voicing systems so John definitely uh, you should definitely really uh, consider enrolling in our course because we kind of um, open the uh, treasure chest and kind of say have at it. Uh, Chris says this is amazing. Thank you so much. I'm looking to get deeper into this. Uh, no problem, Chris. All right. So it says the delay. Ah, you're right. So there is a delay between my hand and um, this. So let me see if I can fix that really quickly. Still no problem. Eves. I think I hope, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Forgive me if I'm if I'm missing it. So let me see if I can fix this. Uh, man, uh, I'm really rolling here. Uh, but let me see if I can fix. It. Give me give me about ten seconds. And I think I might be able to fix it. Um, yep. So give me give me a moment.
Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Jonathan says, only a delay on the overhead, not the MIDI. Um, you are correct, Jonathan. It's only a delay on the overhead. Um, and the only way I can fix it is to stop the stream. And I don't want to stop the stream. So uh, if you can bear with me, um, Eves, Robert, Charles, uh, 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 forgive me. Um, last week I did not have this issue, um, so we're still working out some of the kinks. But um, hopefully, you can still get value out of this. Um, okay. All right. So let's. Um, safe retirement says caught last ten minutes. Great so far. Thanks. Thank you so much. Glad you could come on. So make sure you watch the replay of this. And as someone just pointed out, um, there is a delay between my my hands that you see and the MIDI keyboard. Um, and I can fix it, um, uh, but it will require me to stop the stream. And I don't want to stop the stream on you all. Um, and so, uh, yeah, just look at the MIDI. Just focus on the MIDI. And I apologize. Yeah, these are the these are the the little uh, uh, issues you go through when you're doing stuff live. So uh, we're gonna continue to get better. All right. Um. So where was I? All right. Yeah, we were doing these two-handed moves. So let's go back. Um, So let's do it again. So, so we did one here, then another one here. Um, <laughs> now we're going to this minor chord, and we're going to do another one here. Um, all right. Yes, uh, Chris, you just did six. Six, yes, and so the distances on these moves are six. That's correct. All right. And six are such six and thirds. Um, just a little sidebar. Six and thirds are such an uh, amazing. They give such amazing melodic content. Um, so if you have a melody, the first thing I would suggest doing if you want to add some harmony to it, harmonize in six. And it'll it'll add a, like a great secondary line or in thirds. Um, it's a great little sidebar tip. Okay, all right. Um, let's see. I think what I want to do is kind of jump ahead because um, we're at the 45 minute mark, and so I want to kind of get you out of here. I don't want to keep you forever like I did the last time. Last time we were here for an hour and a half, and I, I could have gone another two hours. Um, so this time. Let's see if I can can make an hour. <laughs> uh, I make no promises though. All right, so uh, let's let's kind of see how we can use these and and kind of start messing with them a little bit. Let's say we're here and we're going to F. So C and we're going to F. Chris says, keep going. Uh, all right. Mr. B says, two is fine. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. So, um, we have this move that we do over C, right? With this one. Or I play, I mess with the rhythm. So we have this move that we're doing over C. Now, here's where we really add some power and utility to this, these ideas. Um, in music, things are, trans are, are transferable often. And so a chord that I learned in one place will work in another. So I'm going from C to F. Well, look at this F major chord. Let's look, it's F major nine. 
So what do you notice up top here? Uh, a C major triad. So even though I'm going to F, you'll see a C major triad there. So I can do the same move over that F major 9. So let's do it over the C. Um, and then over the F. Oh, sorry. You hear that? Do you see that? So why does it work? Well, you see C major, the C major triad is, is in this F major 9 chord. So my C major stuff works here. Let, let's do another example. Let's, let's say we're going from C major to A minor. Now notice something. Look, look at this A minor 7 chord. The C major is there in A minor. Right? Now I have a whole really in-depth teaching on this phenomenon um, that's actually, and I hate to sound like a broken record, but I, I'm re I really want to encourage you all to go and join um, in our online school and see this, this is covered in, um, actually cover the, this idea in great depth in our quarter moves and progression class. Um, so definitely uh, check that out. All right, so, but let's say we're going from C major to A minor. Do you see that? So. It works. Why does it work? Well, you see C major is part of A, A, A minor, and it's even part of F major. So it just, it works. And so you learn one, right? All right. All right. All right. So, so now we, we're seeing the power of of these ideas because then they're transferable to other places. Um, let's look at a minor chord. Let's look at. Let's go to. Mm, let's go to C minor. All right, and let's do the same idea. So, right, all right. So if I'm doing a two five one to C minor, so D G D half diminished G seven flat nine to C minor. So let's do that. Um. <laughs> So, um, now, again, I was talking about the power of this idea. Well, let's look at this minor chord. Um, let's look at it. Uh, um, let's look at A minor 7 flat 5. So this is A half diminished, right? Well, this idea works there as well. Let's look. Um, still works. Wow. Does everybody see that? So let's say, let's say, let's move, let's say we're in B flat um, major. So. All right. B flat. And we're going to do a 2-5-1 to G minor. 
we're going to go A minor 7 flat 5 to D7 flat 9 to G minor 9, right? Well, um, when I go to this A minor 7 flat 5, I can do my C minor move. Why? Because C minor is part of the chord of it, right? So let's, let's see. I'm going to go... Oh, and I can do my minor move there. Five sharp, five, six. So I'll do it again. <coughs> Sorry. Um, I'll do it one more time. So A minor seven flat five. D seven flat nine. <laughs> and then G minor. All right. Um, let's see. I have a. Can you do the moves in D flat? Okay. One well D flat. So I'm gonna do a two five one to B flat minor. So our two is gonna be to our two to B flat minor would be a C minor seven flat five. So this is like thinking E flat minor, right? So we have our move. That's our move. Remember in C minor, let's see here, it's here, right? And so we're gonna play C half diminished. So it'll be it would be this. Um, then F seven flat nine. And then B flat minor. And I could. Right? So I do it again. <laughs> I did the same move. <laughs> I did the same move over the F. But I slide up the 9 instead of going here. It's a little different. So Vincent, there you go, in D-flat. All right. So now I hope you're seeing the power of this because now we have so many options. And if we just learn this one idea, so I'm really just exploiting one movement, right? This kind of, we started there, man. Right, and then we went to minor. Um, over dominant, so let's look at C7. So C7 over dominant. I would, my, I would flat my B flat, so. right? Or even, and I would use flat down if I was going to a minor chord. Um, veteran says, can I hear it on all those destinations? I'm not sure what you mean by that. What do you mean? Can I hear it on all those destinations? What does that mean? Um, so. Um, hello from Atlanta. Uh, uh, Vicky, hi. Uh, I'm in Atlanta as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, just coming on. This is going to be great. I'm definitely going to rewatch and study this. Thanks for sure. Oh, you're welcome, Bill. Um, hmm. Let's see. Chris is from uh, Chris Harrison's in Atlanta too. Cool deal. Cool deal. C to F to B flat. Um, so I'm assuming you mean the C half diminished seven to the F to the B flat. So there you go. Right. I, I hope it helps. <laughs> Let's see, uh, 
can you suggest a practice drill to get these under the fingers? Yeah, so I would just say start in, start in one key. Um, I started in C and just kind of and mess around the, the rhythm. So definitely with the metronome. I may have changed with them. Alright. Alright. Um, and then and then start playing in song and see if you can see if you can pull it in songs. Um, and then move to another key. So master in one key first and then move to other keys. And then try using a different context, a different harmonic context. Like we did, we did the C move over F, right? And it still worked. And even A minor, and it still worked. Uh, let's see. Um, veteran says, do it also on the B flat. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, so we did five, sharp five, six there. And I did a, like a little... I did one. So I did a, like I did a four and a two suspension resolving. Well, it's not really suspended because it's, it's different than major, but I did. I still did it to resolved there. So I did it again. Mm. Let's move right. We're doing our E flat, but because it's related to C, I diminished. We're thinking. Well, then over dominant, right? Right. And then minor. Okay, so I hope that helps, veteran. Um, so let's kind of wrap this um, kind of review. I mean, all right. So remember, we started um, the whole idea of this was these inner motions, these inner movements. And so we started with kind of a sus, sus four and sus two and resolved it, right? And so we can simple, and we, we can kind of manipulate things using those. And then we did two hand moves. And like, right. Actually, before that, I gave you a set of formulas for a major, minor, uh, and dominant chords. Um, so remember, over, over major, you could do five, sharp, five, six, or even sharp, five, sharp, five, seven, six, right? Um, so like a, That kind of idea, right? Um, and then we did these two-handed moves, and we applied them in both major settings, right? Minor, um, even dominant. Dominant going to major, that is. So, and then dominant going to minor, right? All right, and so you can really spice up and add some real interest to any song you play, whether it's gospel, jazz, um, CCM, um, pop, no matter what you're playing, R&B, you can add some movement, character, um, but you have to be careful um, that you don't overdo it, but you can really add motion and movement to your um, playing. So are there any questions? Are there any questions? Uh, let's see. Chris says you play at a church in town. Yes, I play at a church in Lithonia. It's called New Covenant Christian Ministries. I'll write the name. Uh, it's um, in Lithonia, Georgia. All right, so any questions? Any questions, y'all? Any questions? 
kind of want to play a little bit while I wait for your questions. Let's see, Javier says, can you explain how to use tritones, please? All right. Um, do I do this move with fully diminished, uh, Chris? Here's fully diminished. Uh, <laughs> let's see, you can, I think. Won't that be it? Yeah, yep. 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 Yeah, so you can do it on fully diminished as well. I might do some different moves on diminished, but you can definitely do those. Um, so try tones, please. Um, Javier. Um, Javier, that's a, a relatively long discussion. Then maybe, maybe I might, um, uh, but in short, uh, let me give you one aspect of it. There's, there's, there's about three different, three different discussions on tritones and, and, and how they're, how they're done. Um, but let me just give the first one. If I'm, if I'm playing a dominant chord, for instance, C7, right? And I want to voice that in, in a, w in, in a rootless voicing, right? Um. Maybe I want to add the nine. So C9. So I'm going to voice it. Let's see. Um, I'll take the G out and I'll take the C and put it in my right hand. And so this is C7. And so you'll see this is the distance of a tritone. Um, and the term, uh, the technical term is guide tones. And see, so these are the guide tones. The third and the seventh are the tones that give a chord its um, quality. In this case, they happen to be a tritone apart. If it was major seven, it would be this, right? Um, but I would definitely say go check out. I have a video, uh, um, left hand. Um, actually, I have two videos. I did a, uh, I did a, a series of videos. Actually, uh, a pair of videos. Um, there, uh, about a year ago. So let me just put both links to those. Um, it was two parts. <laughs> Here's the first one. Um, that's part one. And then part two. So Sorry about that. You heard that. All right. Now, the interesting thing is a lot of people have seen Part one, where I covered a good bit, but a lot of uh, but a lot of people didn't go and watch part two, where I went even further and like more, like more. So those videos are called twelve left hand voicing options, um, and so I, I go through twelve different options you can use for your left hand when you're voicing chords, right? And so definitely check those out, Javier. Uh, and maybe I can do a video uh, or, or do a, a live stream about that. Let's see. Left hand courting. So Simone Hobson or Simon, sorry, Simon Hobson. Um, definitely check out those 12, uh, those two links I put just below. Uh, my uh, 12 left hand voicing options. Check out both of them because I go everything from s just one note to a whole bunch of notes. Okay. Yes, do you can do this move on how to keep melody while playing. Uh, so the melody, um, kind of a rule of thumb. And now this is not the always the case, but you generally want to kind of keep the melody in your highest voice. Uh, um, so the song, so the fifth, that's, that's my melody. And it's C, E, F, C, right? So 
I could play C, C, F, C, but you lose the melody. You don't know what that song is. You might think it's... Sounds like something else. So, but the melody is... So... Right, I'm going to make sure my melody is on top. In my highest voice, my pinky. Now, sometimes you might not want it there. You might want it on the bottom, for instance. Right? Uh, or you might want it in the middle. You want, might want it disguised. All right, but no, the general rule of thumb is, is put it on top. Uh, let's see. Veteran says, just a quick example of using that move on minor major. I think I already did that. Um... Uh, could you try the movement from from C over a D minor 11? Could you try the movement from C over a D minor 11? Yeah, um, so here's D minor 11. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, uh, Yeah. Minor. Yeah. Yeah, so it works there. Um, how can I learn and practice those great runs you do in a regular drill? Um, the thing that helped me develop uh, lines, um, the runs, and all that stuff. Uh, was working literally on major scale, just major scale practice, consistent major scale practice. So breaking my practice session up into two practice sessions. Um, the first one where I worked on technique, and that would be about an hour. It'd take me about an hour to go through all, five minutes to an hour to go through all 12 um, major chord, uh, major scales, um, and then of course minor scales as well. Um, and, and making sure, I, and I, I was pretty brutal with making sure that I, if I missed a note, I started over, so it wasn't fun at times, but help me. So I, I just put a link in the description box, and that's, that's me showing you how I improved my technique and really got my lines together. Um, so check that out. Uh, what's the correct fingering for the two? Um, I generally use, um, well, it depends. Um, I'm either using, yeah, so I generally use, if I'm playing my thumb, then I generally use my third and my left hand, right? And then if I'm playing my second, I'm, I'm generally doing my fourth. So two and four, I'm generally thinking four and two. But but these aren't dead set rules, so it de it's very much dependent on the where you are. Okay. Let me find your social. Uh, you're welcome, Javier. Gotcha. Formula add to add color notes called trends to the color more than six notes. I'm not sure what you're saying. Formula to add color notes called trends to to chords of more than six notes. Um, I'm not fully sure I understand your question. Formula, uh, is there a formula to add color notes? Well, there. Uh, once you get past major, you just keep skipping. So you have seventh, major seventh, major ninth, right? Sharp eleven, um, and the thirteenth. Um, that would be the first place I would start with these notes up here, in the um, what we call the upper register. Okay, uh, let's see. Please, can we get a tip? Exercise to play in all 12 keys. Mm. Next on uh, to play in all 12 keys. Um, start with one. Um, and simply, uh, so if I'm if I'm go if I, okay, if I'm going to take something through all 12 keys, I will definitely. Um, have a specific regimen I won't go chromatically because you can kind of cheat you can play it here and slide up 
So I'll go in fourths or in, in minor thirds. So I, st I played the idea in C, then I played in F, then B flat, then E flat, A flat, D flat, and so forth. In fourths, up, up. But the first thing, um, uh, Josh, is is to make sure you master it in one key. Once you get it down in one key, then it becomes easier in every other key. Uh, could you explain thirteenths and how you play them? How can I do a combination of elevenths and thirteenths? I just play them. Uh, I generally. If I'm doing 11th and 13th, it's generally over a dominant chord. Right? So if I'm in uh, E flat, um, um, if I'm in E flat, I'll generally put it like so. This is this is a B flat with the 11th and the 13th. Let me go to G. So I have the 11th and the 13th, right? So you could sharp the 11. That's a cool sound, right? You can even flat the 13th. Not so cool, but. So you can flat both of them. That becomes really cool. So on, on dominant chords, that's how I approach it. On major chords, um, of course, the 11 would be sharped. So. Yeah. On minor chords, um, so C minor to my 11th, and depending on which har harmonic case I'm in, it would either be. So, depending on what, if I'm playing, you know, natural minor, harmonic minor, um, or melodic minor, rather. So, I just, just go ahead and play them for sure. Uh, let's see. Um, you're welcome, Mr. B. Let's see, any more questions? How do you play the C-sharp pentatonic scale with the correct finger going up and down? Uh, that's a that's a fun one. Um, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Uh, let's see. So Devonte asked that. Um, so. Um, um, I, you know what? I think. Uh, so thumb on on F, coming down, cross the middle finger on on E flat. And then thumb on B flat. And this is. All right. So there you go. But I would I would definitely encourage you to check out this video because I do a kind of an in depth explanation on that. So this would be the video for you. I'm putting it in the description box now. Um. Leo, let's see, Leo says he's from Port or Brazil, yes, welcome, um, all right, any other questions, any other questions? kind of want to play though let's let's just see if I can um just play for a moment <laughs> oh well while you write your questions uh, now uh, okay let me just play for a moment Uh 
All right, so I have a question from Ruvitz and Morton. Uh, do you have a video with a tutorial, tutorial on how I could like probably use a combination of 11th and 13th to just how to format them in general? I could probably figure it out eventually. Um, mm, I definitely have. Uh, I w listen, um, it's hard to remember wh what I have videos of and what I actually teach in the classroom in our online school. And I know we cover these um, 11th and 13th and how to add these. Uh, so I would, I listen, I would encourage you, and I know I sound like a broken record, but I would really encourage you to um, uh, sign, up, sign up for uh, our Chords Galore class, Chords Galore. Um, and, 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 really we cover all this in real depth the t kind of depth i can't really go into uh here and here is the link to the page uh daquan bowens wait daquan your name like sounds super familiar are you a youtuber you are yeah, I think I've seen a couple of your videos, man. Great work, man. Uh, keep going. Keep going. I uh, appreciate that, man. Uh, how ca uh, Yanni says, how can I expand my 251 to rearrange any song? Um, that, that's a big topic, Yanni. I might have to, <laughs> I might have to save that one for another day. Uh, that's a... That's a big topic. Uh, that's a big topic. Uh, yeah, that's a big topic. But think melody. Um, uh, uh, yeah, that's that's such a big topic. The, the that's that's too much to cover in like a short sound bite. That's that's too much. <laughs> Does your chords galore cover alternate substi alternate substitution recording? Uh, I, then I would say court uh, safe retirement quarter moves and progressions. Quarter moves and progressions. Oh, sorry, I spelled that wrong. Quarter moves and progressions course. That would be the course for you. Uh. All right, um, let's see. I still had a lot I did not cover today. This is pretty interesting. Um, let's see, but can I, can I just share, uh, we're oh man, we're, we're approaching, an hour, I did it again. We're approaching an hour and a half again. Listen, can I share one more, one more move with you all? Uh, 
Yeah, Daquan is here. Uh, da Daquan Bowens. Uh, I'll put a link to his channel. Um, definitely check him out. Uh, here's his channel. I'll link to it. Um, so when you get a chance, check him out. He has a lot of videos. Um, he has a lot of videos out. Um, a lot of videos. All right. Um, so let can I, can I want I want to show you one more move. Uh, and this is a move. This is the same inner 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 voice movement kind of thing um, that I love doing on major chords, and it's going to sound out, really out. Um, but <laughs> but bear with me. Uh, let's see. So. All right, so let's go to the key of A. Um. All right. All right, so we're in the key of A. I'm going to challenge my gospel guys because uh, uh, they don't. Uh, a is not a key that people like to play in. Maybe I'll do this in another key as well, but let's do an A first. Um, uh, yeah, no problem, Daquan. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta support each other. Uh, um, <laughs> music, here, here's the thing I learned about music. The more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. Uh, uh the, the more I learned, you know, I thought, I thought once you could play, you would have mastered music, but I have, I have a master's degree in this, and I, and I, I realize I know far less than I ever thought I did. And so there's room out here for all of us to to share and to and to give and and to encourage others. So uh, I'm here to support, man. Whatever you need, let me know. I'm here to support. Thank you for being on on the stream. All right. So we're in the key of A, and I'm gonna do just a two five, just B minor, and then five, and then one. Right, so let's let's see. Uh, uh, right there. So, like, wait, what what happened, Corey? This is kind of an advanced move. I just wanted to play. This is one of my favorite moves, um, and I had a whole lot of teaching to do before to get here. Before I got to this point, but I just wanted to give this to you, like a little bonus for those that have stayed to this point. All right, so we know A major seven chord is, or A major chord, but I literally play an A flat major chord in my right hand and then move the two inner notes up. This A flat or G sharp in the key of A is diatonic to the key of A, so I'm not concerned about those, but, but this inner motion is what I'm concerned with, this inner movement right here, right? So let's do it, let's do it again, a two, five, one, Here it is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so again, here's my one. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, let's do another key. I said I would. Let's uh, do A flat. Uh, this is like the gospel key. Interesting enough, I'm not a fan of A flat. Uh, it's true. Uh, so here it is. Um, um, so there's G to A flat. time so two five and here it is I'm going to a flat but I'm going to play G and resolve the inner notes all right 
That's a little bit advanced sound um, that you got to be careful. Uh, Okay, so, all right, I'm at a, um, an hour and 27 minutes. I have to call it a day. It's 11 o'clock at night. Whoa. All right. Um, so, uh, any other questions? Maybe I shouldn't say that. All right, listen, uh, thank you all so much for being on this stream for this long. I really, really appreciate, appreciate you all. Um, definitely share the stream. Um, send it out to your friends. Watch it over again because um, there's a lot in here. Uh, that I definitely want you to get and what we want to do is master one idea and then and then move on to the next one um, and so let, let me just kind of nail that home for a little bit uh, listen so often we want to get everything all at once but the truth is this if you master one idea your progress uh, will go uh, rapidly so here's the problem. Oftentimes, we have learned a lot of things, and so nothing is well done. Uh, everything is kind of a little sloppy. Um, uh, but if you're able to master one thing, you might only know four things, but you know those four things well. Um, and mastery the, the is when when you can't miss, right? When and not not when you can't miss one time, but it's impossible to miss. Like eating with a fork, you would never poke your eye unless you have a condition but you never poke your eye with the fork you master eating with a fork to your mouth that's the same way you should be with any idea you try to learn and get it down and I'd rather have four good ideas that I have down that I know I can pull at any time in any key in, in any situation than have 12 or 15 ideas that I can halfway pull when I'm warmed up and everything's working properly and I can maybe pull it one time right so get these ideas, masters, watch this again, and uh, um, um, it will benefit you greatly. Also, definitely uh, check out our online school um, where I'm able to go real, like deep with this. The online school is where I, I really have some of my best nuggets and teachings, and we really break things down even further, and I'd love for you to experience that. So definitely uh, consider joining us in our online school, The Bridge. Okay. Um, but uh, thank you again for sticking on with our first live stream. And so I, uh, uh, we're going to call it a day. So thank you again. Uh, so be blessed and happy practicing.